This week we'll be doing uh, TLC, the things uh, that you'll need are a thin layer chromatography plate or a TLC plate. Uh, those are stored in the back of the room and on. I'll have some at the front table. You'll need a 250 milliliter beaker from your drawer. Uh, from the supplies uh, cabinet, you can pick up uh, drum and caps, foil should be on the cart, and there'll be several different solvents which you'll use. I won't describe those, those are in your procedure, but I'll talk a little bit about how solvent selection is made. And I recommend that you use an old-fashioned wooden pencil. I think it gives the best result when marking on the TLC plate, and you tend not to break so many of them. Uh, if you break them, they're reasonably cheap, so don't don't worry about that. But uh, yeah, I, it, it's it's no fun when you have to start over just because you screwed up by poking a hole in the TLC plate. Again, there's a video, and it'll show all of this, and uh, it'll be appended to this lab. But uh, you'll be using a pencil, and you'll draw a line one centimeter from the bottom. It'll mark crosses evenly across the bottom of the plate to indicate starting points for each sample. Our TLC plates are small, so you can only get about three spots. Um, and also, you don't have to mark the crosses if you're pretty good at judging the distance. Uh, the samples that you'll be putting on, unlike the video, are colorless, and so it's kind of hard to tell where you put the spot, so sometimes it's nice to have a mark there. You'll mark the spots with a drumming cap, place the TLC plate in the solvent or developing chamber, and uh, when it's done, when the solvent front is moved to within about one centimeter of the top, you'll remove it and mark it uh, with a pencil. Now, um, having watched the video of how it was done, You'll recall that I made some spots at the bottom of the plate, um, and I put it in the uh, solvent, and it, those spots moved up the plate. So let's say what you see on the right over here is what happens in your TLC plate. This is supposed to represent the run, run plus 10 minutes plus 20, or reactants, uh, and then this is products, and this is the reaction course, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, you don't have to write that down there. I'm just saying, that let's pretend that's what happened. Well, if you run the TLC of the reactants, you might get these spots that are shown on the left. And if you run the products, you might get this spot shown at the right. And as you monitor the course of a reaction, what you'll notice is that the spot intensities change over time. Now, we'll be visualizing these uh, use, using a, a UV lamp. Uh, we have some uh, lamps specifically for uh, seeing where the spots are in the TLC plate. And the TLC plate that you're actually using it has a fluorophore, that is something that fluoresces under black light embedded in the surface. It turns out the organic molecule acts like sunscreen and blocks out the UV light. And so in the spots and the portions where there's organic material, like in these dark spots, the way I've made them here, uh, is sitting, it doesn't glow. And that's why they'll look like black spots on the plate. Uh, one of the things you'll have to be able to do is called calculating the retention factor. And it's the distance the spot travels from the origin. So, for example, if you put your spots down here, like here, and later it moves to here, and this is the solvent front, then what you'll do is take this distance from the origin to the spot and divide it by the distance from the origin to the solvent front. It's really the fraction. Uh, of the distance that the material has moved on the plate. Now, if it's a two-component mixture, you might get two spots like this. You need to calculate the RFs for each. Now, once you've calculated this RF, if your TLC is good, then these RFs are approximately the same, and as are these. I don't really think you need to recalculate those. Most of us just do it by eye. Here you'll see the product spot, and what these spots probably are are unwanted byproducts of the reaction, but the product itself that we're looking for, it may not, like you see here, it may not line up perfectly. You'd also calculate the RF for the product and then look at the RF to both separate runs to see how the product is developed over time. Very quickly, uh, how TLC works. On the TLC plate, uh, that's going to be represented by this gray portion down at the bottom here. Um, you have silica gel, and we'll talk about the characteristics of silica gel in a little bit. And then above the silica gel, you'll have an organic solvent. 
So we'll put the TLC plates and allow the solvent to move up the plate. And what's going to happen if there's more affinity for the solvent than the surface, then the molecules will spend a greater fraction of the time in the solvent. On the other hand, if there's a low affinity for the surface, then the molecules will spend uh, for the solvent will spend more time on the surface. So when you're looking at a TLC plate, actually, solvent, it will be moving in a direction. And it's the molecules that are in the solvent, not that are in the surface, that are moving. And there's a slow equilibrium that develops uh, as these particles pick up and move down and pick up and move down. You actually see that in the shape of most spots, that there's a tail, and the tail is what's sticking to the plate and not coming up. So, having said that, so you might put your one spot in the middle here. Well, that one spot is actually composed of two different components with different affinities for the surface, ideally. And then mobile phase will flow in this direction. So this is actually the bottom of the beaker on this end. And this is the top of, uh, this is the, top of the TLC plate. What you see is up here, what the molecules on the plate C is the solvent moving over the front, over the top. So over time, what's going to happen is the stuff that spends more time on the plate, a greater percentage of the time on the plate, travels less quickly along with the solvent than the stuff that spends most of the time in the solvent. How that develops on the TLC plate itself is the initial spot disappears. Like you saw when we did the food coloring, the food coloring spot disappears, and you end up with a couple of different spots up the plate. These you would be calculating the RF for by taking the distance it's traveled from the origin to the spot and the origin to the solvent front. Now, it's not marked on here, but uh, that's what you would be doing. So let's talk a little bit about how you select a solvent. And I'm going to use a mouse to draw a TLC plate. It's kind of a bad one. This is the line, and then you have spots like this, right? You have these spots. And, and there's two extremes in, in what the spots will do. The two extremes are they could not move, which means you didn't select your solvent properly. Or they could go, if this is the solvent front up here, they could just travel with the solvent front. And you also did not select your solvent correctly. So what you're trying to balance is you're trying to balance the interaction with the silica gel, which is the, what the plate is made out of, which is very polar, with the solvent. And solvents go from basically nonpolar to very polar. So, so let's say you have a polar compound and it's stuck on the plate. The only so and it's and if you ran the TLC, it stays at the bottom. The only way you can get it to move is using a more polar solvent to get the spots up off the plate and allow them to move with the solvent front at least partially you don't want them to go exactly with the solvent front but you want to choose something somewhere in between okay let's say on the other hand uh, you have a a spot and it moves all the way to the top that's because it spent all of its time in the solvent and it just lifted off the plate and moved with the solvent front that's also not correct. What you'd like to do is force that spot to spend more time on the plate. And to do that, we deal, we play with the polarity of the solvent. So I found a nice description of the solvent series. It's called the Luotropic Solvent Series. It's not a real official thing, I don't think, but um, it, it's what it's called. And um, it was at the Royal Society website, the same guys that do ChemSpider. So, so let's, let me do this by example. First of all, let me talk about the series. In the series, we have high polarity that's up here, and we have low polarity that's down here. So N-hexane, nonpolar hydrocarbon. Water, very polar. And then if you look in the middle, um, there's acetone and ethyl acetate in the middle, and those are sort of intermediate. Uh, they're, well, they're polar, but they're less polar than water. They're in the middle of this series. And as you go down, these molecules tend to be less polar, uh, have lower dipole moments. So let's say you're separating nonpolar compounds. The nonpolar compounds will not like the plate because they're nonpolar. They don't like being stuck on the silica. 
So if you use the, a solvent like hexane, they would just dissolve into the solvent and then move down, move with the solvent front, and essentially come out at the end un, unseparated, we say unresolved. So what you'd have to do is start with something that's a little bit more polar. So oftentimes ethyl acetate is the starting point for these kinds of separations for 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 TLC separations in general it's of an intermediate polarity um, it's relatively easy to uh, evaporate from the plate and there's a bunch of other properties that make it nice uh, and it doesn't smell horrible that's another thing um, but at the same time ethyl acetate uh, is relatively polar so let's say you run your TLC you have your nonpolar compounds and you use ethyl acetate and the spots don't move well what that means is it wasn't polar enough to start the separation so then what you would do is you would take ethyl acetate and maybe add like five percent cyclohexane or five percent n-hexane or toluene something that's more nonpolar and that will allow the nonpolar material that's stuck on the plate to dissolve into the solvent and move with the solvent a little bit better. But because it is, I mean, the compounds are uh, nonpolar, and there's not that much nonpolar characteristic to the solvent, uh, that is 5% uh, cyclohexane, let's say, then, then the, the material will adhere to the plate some, but should separate a little as well. The other extreme is to use uh, be separating polar compounds. So if you have two polar compounds and you run ethyl acetate um, and they don't move at all, that essentially means uh, the, the solvent was not polar enough. And so you need to go to something that's more polar so you can modify it oftentimes with acetic acid um, or methanol or water. And these are all very polar. Uh, Water is a little harder to evaporate, actually. So methanol or ethyl, uh, ethyl acetate seem to be reasonably good. Uh, you can put that at like a 5% in the, the, the mobile phase or the solvent and do the developing of the TLC plate with that. And if that makes the spot move, great. If that doesn't, then what you do is you increase the percentage of the polar component. So let's say you, ha you think you have two polar compounds. You run ethyl acetate what if the spots move with the solvent front then what you need to do is again modify with something that's less polar or actually move to a less polar solvent let's say like chloroform or diethyl ether or dichloromethane and uh, start over and see if you can get better separation using a less polar solvent ports need to be um, completed according to the report format listed in the lab uh, you could submit a single report, uh, parts A through C, and you can. I would like you to answer questions one and three that are found at the end of the experiment.